Up and Just Create podcast, powered by CBS Studios in downtown Birmingham, Alabama. Shut up! Shut up! Hey, this is Ayana Shine with the Shut Up and Just Create, Shut Up and Just Create podcast. Mr. Buffed Up, Mr. Five O, Mr. Birthday Behavior, ah. <laughs> Thomas L. Hey, Harris. How are you doing? <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, thank Thomas. You. You were telling me that uh, you actually have been having your grit in the game since 2002, starting out with uh, acting as far as more on the theater aspect, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And uh, your uncle was the one that kind of brought you in the game, and that's how you ended mm-hmm. up getting your feet wet. And uh, you guys have been doing the mm-hmm. YouTube joints ever since 2009, correct? Well, uh not YouTube. We we do. We started as video, um, videographers. Well, I'm, let me say this. I started off in film doing videos. Okay. So okay. my hand in film was doing videos, music videos. That's how I got my hands in film. Oh, um, gotcha. <clears throat> but how I got with the film, how I got with the videographers, plays, writers, and actors. Um. And worked on a film, but we always do summer films. So in the film, film season here in Michigan usually is the summertime, usually. So okay. during the winter and the fall and spring, we shot videos. So okay. I was always working with them doing videos, you know, writing like scripts for the videos and things like that. And then um, sometimes we shoot the films. So that's kind of how it played out um, in the beginning of the film. Uh, okay. Before what you know, before where we're at right now. In the beginning, it was it was a lot of videos we did, a lot of videography. I mean, a lot of videos, I'm sorry. We were doing uh, gotcha. music videos, R&B, rap, you know, all okay. over the spectrum. Okay, so. okay, okay. So you you actually have the behind the camera ex- as well as the on screen uh, experience. Yeah. Vi- yeah, video, shooting videos, yeah. Um, but it's still different than film. Behind right, the scenes right. film and video, it's still way different. Yeah. Okay, and um, mm-hmm. so birthday behavior is your baby. Yeah, that's the first uh, one I directed. That's that's the first one. That's the that's the first one. That's the baby <laughs> right there. Yep. Gotcha. That was the first one. And and tell us how did you end up uh, directing that particular joint? Because that's a bad joint. Yeah. So uh, I got pushed into it. Me, you know, what I'm saying like um. Team from Moolah Films was like, you know, let, let's try directing. Why don't you just direct this one? Because I was always the person that would always, you know, uh, help out and give tips about acting and things like that. Other people always just trying to help as much as I can. So he said, let's try directing. Because I really didn't have a, a role in this one. But um, okay. I think it's even real, even if we don't have a role in something, we always are there full time helping. Right, right, like, right. We always right, doing right. something as a team. Uh, and so I said, yeah, let's try it. And so we set up. Uh, the rehearsals and the filming and it just went great and I, I fell in love with film directing. You know? <laughs> now it's my baby now, you know what I'm saying? I love film directing now. So um I, I would say Moolah Films pushed me into it. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. So uh tell me, what are you currently working on at this moment? Oh uh, so so right now we actually we just premiered the mule last month. Um that's uh, that's my second debut uh Film directing, um, film I directed, I should say. Um, and McGraw the series just released. Uh, nice. We're on our fifth episode. We're on our, okay. going on our fifth episode coming up this Sunday, and um, we're getting ready to gear up for our film season uh, this summer. So, you know, hopefully, Buffed Up Two comes. You know, it's, in, <laughs> it's in the plans. It's on the schedule, so we'll see. Nice. Uh, we got Murder has another movie coming, and um, we got a couple more things we, we got on the table. So. You know, we'll see how, how, how everything plays out. Dope, dope, dope. So uh, tell me, what type of audition and filmmaking tips do you have for those uh, actors that are just starting out? Or even if they've been in the game for a little bit of a minute, but uh, what tips and things of that nature would you give them? Um, I always tell, you know, when I teach classes and uh, I tell my students, I say always, be up to date on your craft, meaning just always constantly be studying, always constantly be um, doing something to progress yourself in the craft, um, whether 
watching and studying movies, films, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's write, reading scripts, reading books about acting, reading books about anything that can help you as an actor, you should be doing something, taking mm -hmm. classes, um, auditioning for sure, trying to get as much experience on camera you can, theater shows, um, anything you should year round be trying to progress in your craft, something to help you. So, you know, I tell them out of a day, you should be doing, you should be having focus at least an hour a day on your craft. And, and, that, and that's, and that's a, a, a short, right. you know, that's, that's not a lot of time, but at least give it an hour of your day every day. Something to help, you know, whether it's reading a book, whether it's, you know, doing some, some practicing, you know, techniques and right. with your acting, whatever it is, do something. You know? Okay. So that, that would be my advice and tips. And you say you offer acting classes. How how does one, you know, find these particular classes? So Moolah Films Actors Association, it it runs in the fall. Um, the the film, I mean, the uh, acting classes runs in the fall. Um, we're not sure right now, depending on how this situation plays out with the coronavirus, if it's going to get pushed back to the winter or stay in the fall. We don't know right now, but um, you go to that page and you get all the details and updates you need. Um, yeah, we offer it. Uh, this is going in our third year now. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So nice. Uh, tell me, how did acting in uh, a web series jumpstart your career? How did it? Well, one thing it did, it gave me an understanding that um, independent filmmaking has a big lane. Because when we dropped our trailer for the movie that never came out, we got such a crazy feedback on it. It was crazy. And it was all on YouTube. It was just a trailer on YouTube. But the reaction and the, the attention we got from it, it opened our eyes to see that, whoa, independent filmmaking has a lane, like a bigger lane than usual. You know, 20 years ago, you couldn't drop an independent film on YouTube or on any of these streaming sites. They, weren't, they, weren't, they didn't exist. So right. the only way you could do it is either do it out of the truck of your car, you know what I'm right. saying, word of mouth, um, uh, promoting as far as like on radios or stuff like that or you had to go to Hollywood and do it and try to get right. picked up at a film festival or things like that. Now, you drop it on YouTube, it's going to tell them what the numbers are doing. If you <laughs> drop it on the streaming site, it's going to tell them what the numbers are doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, don't, right. you don't have to necessarily follow those, those traditional ways anymore. Now, you can actually create your own lane and your own fan base. Um, it just all depends. You know, you don't know. Like, you, you never know what's going to catch fire. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've seen things on YouTube go crazy. And I've seen mm -hmm. other things on YouTube not do anything. So, but all in all, it, it's a lane that you, as a filmmaker, have now that you don't have to, you didn't have 20 years ago. It's a voice. It's a, it's, it's a voice that you can have without having to go through a middleman anymore. Gotcha. So tell me, um, what would you tell independent filmmakers that uh, are maybe a fan of you guys or of yourself in general uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to being able to see how you're progressing from uh, an actor to a director and things of that nature and having mm -hmm. babies of your own as far as project goes. Uh, what mm -hmm. would you say to those that are looking at you guys as uh I guess more so of a blueprint, so to speak. Um, you know, I'll trust the process. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't get in the speed thinking it's going to be overnight. It's not. You know, it's, a, it's not an overnight situation. It takes time, sacrifice, dedication, and hard work. Um, and I know that's like a cliche thing to say, but it's the truth. You know, <laughs> this ain't an overnight situation. You know, you, you're going to have your ups and downs, but just stay dedicated to the craft. You know, if you love filmmaking, just continue to grow, give it your all, and in due time, you, you'll be able to, you know, you, you're going to get what you got coming if you put in that work, blood, sweat, and tears. Um, so the number one thing is just stay dedicated. Believe in yourself. Believe in the craft and um, in the hard work you put into the craft. Gotcha. So that, that's the biggest thing, yep. yep. Gotcha. So how did you channel uh, the character in 5 -0? How did you channel that particular character? Um, you know, I think certain things made it easier, like when it came to me having a responsibility of a son, 
I could relate to that. You know, having that mentality of you would do anything for your son was a little easy to relate to because I, you know, I naturally would in real life. And that being my real son in 5-0 helped a little okay. bit. Okay. I was going to ask real you son. So, yeah having, my, yeah, having my real son in there, that kind of was a great tool to help me, you know, make things a little more authentic, you know, easier to be authentic because, you know, I'm looking at my real son. I really would do these things for him in real life. You know what I'm saying? Um, as far as, like, sacrifice everything or do whatever it takes to make sure he's okay. I mean, not go out and ride. Like, you know, so I ain't going to do that. I ain't like that. Um, but, but no, but yeah. And then just being, being able to uh, be that cop that has a, a have reasoning still, like you know, what I'm saying, like I don't want to be ruthless and reckless and wild. I still want to have a, have some kind of understanding of the law and uphold the law. I mean, I ain't trying to just be savage, so I had that fight between being savage but also being loyal to my partner, who I knew had my back, and being loyal to my family and understanding that we got to do this to get this. But also, I know that what we're doing is wrong, and where do we go on the line? So it, it was it was things that I drew from. You know, that, that helped. And then having somebody like, you know, tell with you who can bring things out of you mm -hmm. was a major help as well. Just being able to feed off of him and, and go back and forth on that, it was, it was just, you know, it, was, it made it a lot more easier to be able to uh, be around him and work off of him and him work off of me and things like that. Nice. Nice. So tell me, um, how, I guess, what's your... You know, usually, especially when it comes to creatives or artists mm -hmm. and things of that nature, we all have mm -hmm. some type of work or uh, ritual, so to speak, mm -hmm. that we do uh, in order to channel certain things. So with directing, with uh, birthday behavior being the first joint that you directed, uh, what was that like as far as preparing yourself mentally and everything uh, before set? Um, you know, preparing mentally for it, you just got to understand that um, when you get on a set, you know, things can get hectic, things can get chaotic, time moves fast, you know, especially when you're trying to get something done. Um, you're dealing with all kinds of different personalities, so you have to understand everybody individually. Mm -hmm. um, you just got to go in knowing that, you know, you and your team is, is working towards making something great. You got to go in understanding that um, you have a team and that everybody has everybody's back. And, and you know, knowing that you guys are going to do what's best for the project and also knowing that the people around you are going to put in just as much, much work as you so I think just going in with the mindset that, that, you know, at the end of the day, this is what we love to do. Everybody here loves to do it. And we're here to make, make a great film. Gotcha. And so I think, you know, that, waking up every day, that was the mindset, just knowing that, you know, you get to do what you love with the people that love it like you love it. And so let's go have fun. Let's go make a film. What's the, uh, I guess, what's one of the your favorite things about being on set? Um... You know what? One of my favorite things is being able to be around people who have a love for something as much as you, and the camaraderie and the brotherhood and the and the, just the the fun, like you literally having fun. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. On top of doing what you love and making a film, I think just that whole atmosphere of just being around that is is just joy in itself. That's one of the, the biggest things, and also. One of the biggest things is being able to um, give back. Like when we go to certain uh, uh, neighborhoods, uh -huh. you know, kids that that come around, we put them in the films if we can. That's gotcha. the platform. We put them in. We, uh, you know, we we allow them to like see that, see themselves in a movie. You know, be able to say, "Yo, right. I'm in that movie," and it, and it brings joy to us. We love it because <laughs> we wish that we had somebody doing that for us. When we were right, kids. right. So we try to just give back to the youth as much as we can. Especially with films, like if there's an opportunity, we say, "Hey, man, come on, come be in the movie." Nice. You know, just come on, you know, come join. You know, you know, you get a line of, you know, just give them that because a lot of people didn't give us that when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. And so, 
just being able to do that, that brings a lot of joy in itself. So it, it's a multiple things that I can say uh, being on set. Gotcha. So uh, tell yeah. me, what's the first thing you uh, do when you wake up in the morning? Pray. Pray. First thing I do is I pray. I thank God for everything. It's the first thing I do. I thank him for the opportunities for my, my family. I thank him for, you know, waking me up. You know, I, I, I pray. It's the first thing I do. Hey, I definitely hear that. I definitely hear that. So mm. what do you have to do before you go to sleep? As far as, like, I have to make sure that I can, like, for me, uh, it's it's hard to go to sleep because it's hard to turn voices off. It's literally hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard yeah. to turn the voices off. Yeah. So, uh, what does uh, that look like for you? Well, again, praying. <laughs> I pray before I go to bed. I, I pray before I go to bed. I say my prayers. You know, thank you, thanking them for let me make it home safely to my family. And thank you for allowing me to, you know, to have a house to lay my head in. Definitely hear that. And what would you tell your 13 year old self if oh. you could go back? 13 year old me. Stop <laughs> being a damn class clown, boy. <laughs> Sit down. Okay? Sit down. Take school serious. Okay? I would tell myself, take school serious and understand financial freedom. Understand financial. Mm. You know, I would tell my 13 self, learn how to make and save money, not make and mm. speed. That's what I would tell my 13 year old self. But my 13 year old self, I don't know if my 13 year old self would be going back with a listen to me. <laughs> my 13 year old self, man, man, sure. I was such a clown. <laughs> no, not me. So tell me, when you have wet or when you do wet, then you'll consider yourself to be successful. What does that look like? All right, say it one more time. When I do? When you have wet or when you do wet, uh, um, how does success look like for you? God forbid anytime soon, but when it's my time to go, I can. I have a legacy that I left for my family and for the people of the community to say, they have the opportunity to do it. I left the blueprint. Mm. You know, I made an impact on someone in someone's life through films and directing and acting. Um, because I don't believe the mountain can be reached in this lifetime. It's just mm. too much to learn. It's too much to continue to to um, grow and progress and challenge yourself. You know. Do you hit a height in your life where, you know, you feel like you're at the top? Yes, but I believe when you get to the top, that's when you start to go down because you're not over no more. So I always wow. tell myself, the top of the mountain ain't reaching there. But when the time comes that God says it's your time and you see the mountaintop, I want to be able to look down and say that I left something for people to be able to say thank you. I want to be able to say that I was able to help somebody in my time of making filmmaking and movies and, and things like that. Nice, nice. So, uh, tell me, what's your next move? Oh, uh, continue making films. Next <laughs> move is on to the on to film se season. Next move is to stay in the house and hopefully this coronavirus stuff go away so we can get back to filming. That would be the next move. So the next move is filming again. We are behind schedule. Come on, coronavirus, get on up out of here. Okay. <laughs> This is craziness now, you know, but no, but I definitely want to send prayers to the people that have been affected by the coronavirus. My family has been affected by it. A lot of people have prayers to the family. Um, you know, like we always do, we're going to get through. We're going to get through this like we always do, standing together and working together. Um, stay home, stay safe. And, you know what I'm saying? My next move is just films. Let's get to the films. Yeah, just. So let's speak on Coach's Corner. How did that come about and explain that? So Coach's Corner, when I started being a director and, and holding like acting sessions with our core group, um, I believe it was Ceno or Murder or, or Lance. I can't remember which one it was. But they started calling me Coach. Like I'd say something like, this is how you do this? And he'd go like that. And so I'm like, all right, Coach. And then it, it went from <laughs> one person, the next person. And then everybody was like, Coach. Hey, Coach, Coach, Coach. And I'm like, 
I'm like, all right, whatever. Come on. <laughs> and so, you know, that's how Coach started when they start calling me Coach. And then um, Coach's school started because we were in quarantine and we couldn't film. So I'm like, man, like, I want to still be able to give back. Like, I want to be able to still give back to people. And I want people to be prepared for this upcoming film season because it's going to hit us fast. Okay. And I want people to be able to have insight and understanding and clarity on which route to go or which what they want to do or how to do this. And I want them to learn from my experience and mistake that I made. I want to give it to them so that they don't make the same one. So, um, and so I was on a live one time just talking. You know, I don't know what it was about. I was talking about something. Uh, one of the guys, his name is uh, Wes. He was like, yo, man. You should call it Coach's Corn. <laughs> and so I was like, yeah, and we started coming up with, with um, you know, sub, uh, topics we were going to talk about on Coach's Corner. And, you know, we was like, let's do it. So Coach's Corner every Sunday, 7 p.m., my IG line. You know, the last topic we talked about was, um, are you in it to be famous? Are you are you chasing the fame or the class? <laughs> so, you know, we, we can talk about a lot of su- topics, but that's how it kind of started. Nice, nice. So uh, I do know that you're also an entrepreneur. Yes, yes, so, yes. I, I uh, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say. So tell us what that looks like for you. Um. So. Um. You know, I, I own. I've been. Uh, I don't want to say like. I don't want to say this. I don't want to sound like I'm like rich because I'm, <laughs> I'm a working man. I work, work. but uh, I have family business that you know. Me and my family, we run, my, uh, my mother and I and my wife and I, we run a business outside of filmmaking. Um, I, you know, I do coaching, not coaching, but teaching classes, you know, okay. um, we teach that. And, you know, and that's pretty much all I do is, is filming and teaching. Nice. You know? um, but I do, I, I've done a lot of learning in the business side of this. And I do say if you're a filmmaker or actor that's doing independent film, you need to learn the business. You need to learn the business. You need to learn the business. And when I say business, I mean like the business side, the finances, the marketing, the branding, you know what I'm saying? Understanding your 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 value, what you bring to the table. How much should you be paid, if anything, or if more? You know, you gotcha. need to learn the business side. Learn learn and understand entrepreneurship because it'll help you understand how to stay uh, a working actor in independent filming. You know, understand how to protect your brand and protect you because you are the brand. So... I always encourage that. Entrepreneur, learn entrepreneurship. Learn business. Learn it. Yeah. Nice. So tell us, uh, give us a synopsis of what uh, the two joints that you have out right now or that you guys have out right now. Give us a synopsis of uh, those particular joints so that everyone so Mule, can make sure they check out. Yeah, so Mule is on, it's actually on Amazon Prime now. So Mule is about two guys. Uh, one guy, he's trying to get his work from one side of Detroit to the other side. Um, the other guy, he's just a clown. He takes him on all kinds of detours that have nothing to do with what he's trying to do. The guy uh, is trying to get it across town. He's on a time limit. Um, the character, I'll say his character name is BJ. BJ's trying to get his work across town. And Booby, who's the guy that's taking him on all these crazy adventurous stuff that has nothing to do with anything, is just in the way. But they begin to learn each other and learn that they kind of are connected in the way. Okay. Um, and so it's just a, a thrill ride of just comedy, roller coaster of just craziness. Um, and uh, McGuire is about uh, McGuire. You know, it's a street in in Detroit, in Southwest Detroit, called McGuire. And it's just you know we went back to the roots of what started us, which is our gangster stuff. So okay. it, it, it's it's cops and robbers. You know okay. what I'm saying? Cops <laughs> and robbers. So it's, it's you know murder murder plays the lead guy who's just an up-and-coming street guy trying to make his way, trying to survive and take care of his family and, and you know, take care of his situation. And I play myself and Justin Vespers plays um, kind of like narc gang okay. squad cops. Okay. You know, um, one guy lives on both sides and, and another character lives on one side of the of the, of the the uh, line of bad and good. Okay. And, um, it's just a thrill ride of, of, of Emotions, you know, if you know, if you know, and you know, we love the action, the act, <laughs> you know, gangsta. <laughs> so, 
but we took it back to him. You know, we took it back. We haven't done it in a long time, and uh, we took it back. And it's funny story because McGraw had 2017, and we had to come back and we shoot about oh man, what 70 something scenes in 2020 story because. We had to stop production to do some things, and it kind of got um, held up a little bit. But you know, we came back and said, "Yo, we got to yeah. finish this. We got to do this for tail. You know, we have to finish this. We got to do it." Okay. And you know, the reaction we've been getting is crazy, crazy reaction from the from the uh, fans, and um, they've been waiting on it. They're like, "We've been waiting on this. Y'all should have been dropped this, man. man. We were waiting too long for this. Too long is <laughs> too long ago." So we just been loving it. We loving it. Nice. So when you guys first started uh, with, I, well, I know, um, what is it? Not 211. Was, which one came first um, as far as YouTube goes? Well, well, actually, what happened was you, 211 was first. And um, okay. 211 got leaked onto YouTube. Okay. And some things that we couldn't take it off YouTube. So it couldn't come off YouTube. And the same thing happened with Bucked Up. And then 50 got on there. We was able to take 50 down. And, um, so it's just like like if you shoot a movie in the, in the bootleg, in the, uh, the, the, the DVD, the DVD man. Same thing, like <laughs> bootleg to, to YouTube. And, you know, we couldn't get it off. It was taking too much to get it off. So we just, you know, we took, we took it in the bootleg. You know. Okay, so did you guys, you know, I so when it came to, uh filmmaking and and dropping the first uh film or whatnot did you guys already have a fan base prior to dropping it or did the fan base no. come after okay the fan base came after 2011. we didn't have, okay. we didn't have no we didn't really have a fan base before 2011. you know we were known in the city as videographers you okay know, we, we shot videos we were you know that type of thing but we didn't we weren't known for movies so after three once 2011 dropped then our names became synonymous with, with filming okay okay gotcha yeah. and uh tell us so when it comes to i know we spoke a little bit earlier um about this but two people dead or alive on a project whether it's yours or whether it's theirs who would it be <laughs> oh man uh, listen it's too many <laughs> like i said tupac is somebody i would have loved to be in the film with because I always look at him as such a great entertainer when he was alive. I could imagine what he would be like in 2020 as a as a polished uh, actor who studied, who who you know grew in the craft and really learned and became you know uh, uh, really in depth with, with acting. I could imagine what he'd be like right now. Uh, as Denzel, you know that's that's my favorite actor of all time. Nobody ever better. Spike Lee is somebody I would want to stand next to as a director. One of my favorite directors, him and Martin Scorsese. They're my two favorite. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> two favorite. And, and Glenn Close and Angela Bassett. I would love to do, like, there's so many. Johnny Depp <laughs> is the most craziest actor. Like, his range is ridiculous. So, it's quite a few. I don't know if I could just say two. But, yeah, it's quite a few. It's quite a few. Gotcha. And uh, I just want to make sure that we have this. Uh, Tell us how did birthday behavior come about? So um, birthday behavior, um, we had just done, got done doing plug love, and um, T, who was from Mula Films, was like, you know, he saw the reaction. We all saw the reactions from the women about plug love. Like it was mm -hmm. a very great reaction to it because it was a love story. Shut up and just create podcasts. Powered by CBA Studios in downtown Birmingham, Alabama. Shut up!